everyone and welcome to the Inside APSAD webinar series. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners and custodians on the land of which this event takes place. So I'm coming to you today from Mianjin on the lands of the Turrbal and Yarra people. I would also like to extend that acknowledgement to any Aboriginal and or Torres Strait Islanders who are joining us today from across the web. So my name is Sam Clark and I'm one of the nurse educators here at Insight and I have the pleasure of facilitating today's webinar, Beyond Words, painting a picture of the efficacy of art therapy. So our presenter today is Duke Albarde. So Duke has a wealth of experience in human services. Initially, she began by facilitating art as a therapy through socially engaged art projects and all accessible creative workshops, both with culturally diverse and socioeconomic clientele. This then led to a job as a senior life coach and hub coordinator, supporting people with disabilities and mental health concerns. Aspiring to underpin and expand her practical knowledge with evidence-based theories, Duke then completed a Masters of Art Therapy at La Trobe University. She is a professional member of Australian, New Zealand and Asian Creative Arts Therapies Association and can register as a counsellor with the Australian Counselling Association, Psychotherapy and Counselling Federation of Australia. So Duke provides a trauma-informed, individual and group-based psychological and counselling services. She has experience working in clinical, community, residential and outreach mental health settings with both teenagers and adults. The moment she primarily works with NDIS clients with complex and chaotic and chronic mental health issues on a wide range of concerns, recently designed and facilitated a group run program for survivors of natural disasters, and taught psychoeducation at an Indian high school for children from the slum. So Duke's Therapeutic Alliance is a client-led, underpin underpinned by self-determination theories, positive psychology, integrating talk therapy and psychoeducation with visual expression and somatic processing of non-verbal inner experiences. So as you can tell from that introduction, Duke is an art therapist with a wealth of experience in the human services section. So without ado, I will hand you over to Duke to begin the presentation of Beyond Words, painting a picture of the efficacy of art therapy. Okay. Thank you, Sam. That was a beautiful introduction. I, and I'm impressed. Um, so welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Duke. I'm a registered art therapist, and I will talk today about how do I work as an art therapist, what that can be like, and a little about the... Um, technical, so the theoretical uh, underpinnings and current research. Okay, let's see if I can make the slideshow work. Yes. Okay. First, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands that I live and work on, Bangalore country, and pay my respects to indigenous elders past, present and emerging. I seek to address ongoing political colonial structures and policies of Australia, and I support the struggles of the First Nations people in seeking justice, recognition and respect, essential for individual and collective healing. So first bit about privacy and safety. Uh, this presentation is being recorded and will be accessible for few online uh, on Insight platforms. I invite you to keep your cameras on, but I actually don't think we can see you. So it's up to you. If there's technology issues, please stay with us. We will try to solve them as soon as possible. Some images and information may be sensitive and could be found triggering. If that happens, you may wish to step back from this session and practice self-care and we welcome you to return at any time. Also, it is important to note that online communication may result in missing visual or audible audio cues, which may lead to misunderstandings. So please know that we practice with utmost respect here. Uh, we will try to check for questions in the message box at regular intervals and plan to respond to them at the Q&A at the end of the session. Please keep in mind that the art therapy that, as I practice it, is only a snapshot in a broad spectrum of the methodologies within the creative arts therapies. And I will briefly introduce the following topics to you. So 
But first, I invite you to take part in a small survey by thinking back to last weekend. And it might help if you drop your gaze or if you feel safe enough to close your eyes. And I'm asking you to, inviting you to think back to the weekend. Can you recall anything that stood out for you? An activity, a place, where were you? What were you doing? Who was there? What did it look, feel, or smell like? And what else was happening in the environment or internally? So but now you all have something in mind, um, vague or a very clear memory, it doesn't really matter. But just wondering, how do you remember? Do you remember it in words? Or do you remember it in sensations and images? Or maybe a combination, or maybe different. So I invite you all to put in the chat, like you remember it in words, visual language, or otherwise. And we make a little tally, and we'll return to that during the Q&A to see how most people think they experience remembering. Okay. So my presentation starts with the premise that everything we experience is processed in our brains from the bottom up and that essential memories are stored as sensations. When we dysregulate or are traumatized, our thinking brain disconnects, which makes it much harder to access memories, verbalize feelings and emotions, and to break away from ruminating thoughts. Correlated, Malchioli posits that art therapy can enable the expression of trauma by using metaphoric modalities that consequently help clients to connect the sensory and declarative or implicit and explicit memories of the traumatic experience. Connecting memories through the expressions of art increases their ability to self-regulate both emotions and body sensations, as well as talk about the trauma, especially in the early stages of counseling. So what is art therapy? Art therapy is a process-based psychodynamic therapy where the client supported by the art therapy therapist uses creative process, visual language, and verbal communication for introspective investigation and personal expression. This creates a triangular um, relationship or clinical alliance, incorporating client, therapist, the creation process and the outcome, and a degree of attention that is given to each of those um, elements varies. Art therapy is for all ages, skill levels, and abilities, but it is not just for fun, an art class requiring artistic skills or working towards a finished product for exhibition. As the therapeutic benefit is in the engagement in a process rather than an aesthetics. An art as therapy, as it's mentioned in the introduction, or therapeutic art making as an enjoyable pastime and creative expression can be crucial for a per person's mental well-being. But in general, the aims and the methodology of the engagement differ from art therapy and also then the art therapist, sorry, the facilitator might not be a trained mental health professional. Jane O'Sullivan, lecturer in art therapy at the University of Queensland says, the master level program is seen as the entry point into the professional field of art therapy. And according to Enzo Carter, 
registered art, creative art therapists are university trained in both creative and psychotherapeutic methods to help clients express themselves and improve well-being. Creative art therapists are mental health professionals who use creative processes as a therapeutic component in the practice. And an accredited art therapist will either be registered with Enzagata or, since recently, with PACFA. Art therapists work across a range of health settings, as contractors in private practice or as part of a multidisciplinary team. Services include preventative, early intervention, acute care and recovery-oriented clinical care. Art therapy can be provided individually or in a closed or open group session. And these sessions can be standalone, singular interventions, part of a program with a set duration or continued therapy. Modalities are generally distinguished as open studio, person-led or themed. Okay. So some merits is of art as in multisensory non-verbal communication is that art making can offer co-regulation and containment, provide structure, invite externalization, and communicate thoughts, ideas, feelings, and concerns. Emotions and behaviors can be witnessed, normalized, and accepted. Aligned with trauma-informed and client-responsive practice, the aims and goals vary per person or group and per session. So I'll invite you now to have a quick read through this list and pop any questions you have in the chat. Okay. Some of the aims is to daring to open up to new experiences and unexpected outcomes, which encourage stepping away from perfectionism or overthinking, whereas mindfulness and activating or discharging of energy through movement can foster effect regulation, visceral and somatic introspective contemplation, expression of emotions and of thoughts. And the art making typically results in tangible reminders of the thinking and feeling process. And this presents the opportunity for distancing, objectification, and both of them can help and assist in recognizing thought patterns and behaviors. Furthermore, art therapy offers the opportunity for non-sequential ordering and may re represent diverse feeling content in one and the same work as can be seen in a right-hand image. It can then res be responded to in search for a solution or a different perspective. Reducing heightened states and emotion regulation are key ingredients in gaining sustainable therapeutic outcomes. Within art therapy, a few examples are uh, beading, which is a great activity to feel in control and explore structure. Another strategy is concentrating on drawing or painting lines, or fill a small canvas with a color that you experience as calming or helpful. Whereas clay can provide a wide range of energy release and sensory gratification. So this is an example of a regulation strategy with a client. This client struggled with anxiety, depression, suicide ideation, PTSD, schizoaffective disorder and chronic pain, and then a history of drug-induced psychosis. The protective factors were family, music, and art. And during previous sessions, the client developed a strong visual language, including evolving patterns and colors. During this session, the client said that they experienced increased anxiety due to the emphasis on the defects and concerns during their various health appointments. 
and to counterbalance the spotlighted pathological aspects. I invited them to order the pipe cleaners from dislike to like. Then assign traits, attributes, and concerns to each of these pipe cleaners, and following to scrunch them together. The client then examined the ball and agreed it was a fair representation of human complexities, with positives and negatives intertwined. I then invited them to explore the construction, pulling up a negative as it might come to the fore in their life. Here we presented by the yellow. Or we focused on during the session. And then utilized the five cleaners representing virtues and strengths, for example, the black and the beige, to coil around the negative, negating its visibility and holding it, counterbalancing and addressing the concern, similar as to how strengths and coping strategies are used in daily life. After mindful engagement, the client visibly calmed and reflectively reorganized vulnerabilities and strengths, confirming self-regulation and problem-solving skills. And I think it's also important to note that the works created during art therapy can be profoundly personal. So outcomes are generally part of case noting and usually held by the therapist. However, in this case, the client was invited to take the ball home as a regulating tool and mindfulness strategy. In this next example, the client gained insight in self. During an art therapy session with an established psychosocial recovery group with young people with chronic mental health concerns, I invited the participants to join a two-phase directive. First, they explored value cards, individually selecting at least one they felt applied to them, admired or strived for. The participants were then invited to choose any media that resonated with them and to engage in a making process whilst keeping these values in mind. One person quietly created a systematic field of sticky notes, as we created in this image, and then faintly penciled words under some of the notes. And reflecting on the creation, the participant appeared surprised and softly said, I do keep it all hidden. During my reflection, I noted the visible tactile soothing and co-regulation, Controlled, systematic, art-making, promotive, organizing thoughts, and a visual and verbally expressed insight in self. Art therapy as a process-based transdiagnostic tool nurtures self-examination of underlying psychological concerns rather than implementing diagnostic-based protocols. Art therapy is underpinned by a range of contemporary therapeutic approaches and methods. This image is a snapshot of my broader clinical framework as I draw on trauma-informed, humanistic, and self-determination theories in engaging in, engaging in person-shaped therapeutic alliances, taking account of external circumstances and promoting client agency. I also work strength-based, promoting the perspective of the client and acknowledging the participant as the specialist. Furthermore, incorporating concepts from specialized art therapy theories like the expressive therapies continuum. As the two previous examples of little case studies showed, Art therapy allows both top-down and bottom-up approaches, either starting with a cognitive approach or by unpacking and addressing subconscious issues, needs, and knowledge. So this is the ETC tool pioneered by Cajun and Lou Spring. And it correlates to the top, middle, and lower brain. 
it categorically organizes three basic levels of human functioning. Increasing in complexity as the information process moves upwards from baseline physical processing to abstract thinking. Each level in this model represents a continuum between opposite poles in information processing and visual expression. The lower brain functions are kinesthetic to sensory. Mid-brain activities range from perceptual to effective. And the domains on a top brain level are cognitive and symbolic. The central axis is accessed during integration of information processing domains, either per level or a synthesizing level. And you also might know this feeling as being in a state of flow where you forget the time and things just smoothly go. So the EDC, this model, is helpful both in planning and assessment as it links match material use, so I'm not sure to pronounce that, material use and visual expression with information processing. And the assessment is alongside standard mental health assessments. So charting the ETC, how to use this in practice. Hence posits that well-functioning individuals gather and process information through all levels and channels. Following monitoring in what domain and level visual processing takes place can identify strengths and challenges. Typically, the attention of the participant during an art making session is not static nor is the involvement singular. And, and when using the EDC tool for assessment, the art therapist charts clients' predominant focus of immediate experience processes. So across one session, there might be two points, three points, seven points, like in this example. And taking account of changes in the creative expression may echo internal dynamics. Conversely, repetitive, continued dwelling in one dimension may point to areas of conflict and being stuck, in which the right-hand example shows that the lower brain is being accessed and a little bit of the middle brain, um, but the cognitive, symbolic, and affective were not being touched upon. Where in the left example, it's almost working throughout all the different levels and domains. Media properties. So inherent to the ETC assessment and tool is the premise that handling materials affect internal responses, in turn impacting on the experience and therapeutic engagement. keeping in mind that art therapy and art media, sorry, art media has social, constructed and personal significance. Clients vary in developmental capacity and meaning making and effect are influenced by personal and cultural preference and bias. Saying that the choice of material can aid transition between the domains and levels of the ETC. For example, markers, a simple mediated, resistive, controllable medium, likely stimulates cognitive processes. Whereas collaging, magazines, images, likely evokes symbolism. And clay can induce both kinesthetic and sensory exploration. And it is pertinent that an art therapist offers media in line with both the visual expression and information processing types that the client is comfortable with before stimulating transition to other ADC levels and domains. 
Understanding that, as well as media properties, enables an informed choice of materials that are seen as effectively addressing the client needs and facilitate therapeutic gain. The media is wide ranging and each media has its own qualities, uses, drawback and advantages. So there's the typical art therapy media, um, conventional fine art like paints, pencils, pastels, crayons, paper, uh, paper art, clay, sculpture materials, reading, yarn, fabric, building and found materials, new media and photography. But also, for example, crockery that can be smashed to explore um, kinesthetic, anger expression, and then put together as the most epic. So keeping the ETC in mind, let's have a look at a case study over several sessions. And I will use the alias Drew. This service user recently experienced a manic relapse of a bipolar affective disorder nature. Reports indicated that pre-ill health, the client was high functioning, very calm, easygoing, caring and loving, with the current manic presentations being very out of character. The client sought to improve the mental health, but also expressed uncertainty about our therapy. As they didn't think they had artistic skills, as well as fearing about going too deep, too fast, and visiting overwhelm and relapse. The first uh, four sessions took place during an open psychosocial art therapy group. And Drew focused being uncertain about making art, but accepted an invite to explore sampling. This enabled the client to actively participate in the group and try forming. First handling the sand tray in a technical manner, but after Drew mentioned having an interest in sand gardens, they slowly became more engrossed in the making and less verbal. The client indicated that the resulting small scale landscape functioned as a metaphor for into inner psychological content. And without going in detail, they shared there was much significance. So the predominant ETC domains accessed here were sensory and symbolic. And this media promoted, promoted grounding, provided a boundary to work within, and the singular open-ended directive advocated agency in a form of personal interpretation. In the second session, Drew asked for directives and he was invited to experiment with mark making using soft pestles on colored paper. And next, to continue the mark making, so just putting pen and paper, just dot, uh, line, circle, without looking for any outcome. But then in the second uh, following, okay, in this, following the first mark making of trialing materials to follow it up with making mark with intent. And in the second artwork, the client chose a color for themselves and one for two close family members. Afterwards, Drew at length quietly contemplated the drawings and said, we don't always agree on things. In my notes, I reflected that the subtle encouragement embedded in these two gentle experientials and the resulting sense of accomplishment allowed Drew to both trust and believe in a creative process as potentially beneficial, more pressure might have scared them off or harmed them, less and they might not have seen any reason to continue. And this is in line with the idea that a combination of emotional safety and a measure of anxiety is the key to therapeutic benefits, prompting and enabling change making. The case study drew session three. Inspired by appeal, the client elected to use water paint, despite expressing fear of aggression due to control concerns and a recent incident. We discussed finding containment in the paper boundary 
um, the anticipated process and also ensure during that at any time they can pause and take a break or opt out. And during the making, Drew voiced an interest in calligraphy and decided to choose a color for a close family member. Towards the end, Drew hesitantly added blue, then added a surprise and shared a surprise on how different this late edition felt, sparking a conversation between the participants about what happens when you introduce a new internet element in art or in life. Session four, the directive was refined in conversation with the group participants, and that resulted in a dual investigation of goals and hindrances, motivated by recovery and regression concerns. Drew quietly and intently focused on the art making, occasionally help seeking or engaging in interested conversation with co participants. Drew named continue as a main goal. And the yellow line symbolized contemplation of accepting the good and the bad across such a convoluted journey. So during this session, Drew appeared to access almost all levels in the names of the ETC, including being in flow. The last session was an individual session, and this client responsive theme emerged in a check in process. Drew painted silently, intently, and carefully, consigning a meaning to each color. Then, during contemplation of the spaces between the colors, became unsettled and tearful, but decided to keep the spacing as a boundary to be able to separate them, and then fastidiously added a border. After observing that the image looked like a flag, Drew said, liking the idea that this was a personal flag and concluded there was much to think about. At the end, Drew voiced how thinking about addressing problems had caused anxiety and sadness, but that working through thoughts and emotions in the art making, stepping back and being able to contain in the making had helped in calming the felt emotions to an acceptable level. So generally, as a review, generally coming across as euthemic with a warm and reactive effect, Drew also regularly experienced irritations or tearfulness, but these could be alleviated by keeping a gentle pace, holding space, providing clarity and containment. Initially, Drew struggled to stay in the present and on topic, but responded well to uh, redirections. And in the last two sessions, Drew's focus was primarily on the art making. Drew's creative expression advanced from a tentative trialing of media to conscious and immersive meaning making. The images became highly symbolic for life experiences. And the art making provided Drew with insights that helped progress memory, emotion regulation, and future thinking. Drew said to have greatly benefited from the art making process and how art therapy provided a handle to see different images, different angles, and had helped in dealing with stress. Leaving the case study, a typical session uh, starts with a check-in, seeing how the client is doing, what's been happening, and a topic's choice of what is playing for you now, or what would you like to continue from previous, previous sessions, followed by a media selection. The creative engagement often commences with a brief grounding or mindfulness exercise. And the period of art making is concluded with reflection on what came to the fore and has been worked through. The session finishes with thoughts to take home, and confirming the next session. Directives can establish containment. 
My preference is for client responsive and open-ended directives that offer responsibility, freedom, and choice, which are three central concepts for self-determination and stimulants for psychological growth. An open invite can be to choose a media based on what appeals in a moment, then without holding on to an envisaged outcome, contemplate feelings, thoughts, or situations. And such an open directive may commence, for example, through doodling or holding and manipulating clay. And even if such first non-formative exploration lasts the entire session, usually towards the end, thoughts have lined up. Sometimes words are formed or stuff might come to the fore during reflection on a process for creations. Saying that, in my experience, clients often first need to discover how art therapy best benefits them before they gain agency. Hence, initial directives and utilizing the ETC can aid the plotting of personal course. Keeping in mind that predetermined themes and directives may evoke premature emotions before the client is ready to deal with these. So I typically prepare several directives for every individual and group session. And after the check-in, I propose one or some of these, discuss them with the client and support the client in adapting and altering the directive to suit their need. Sometimes at the start and sometimes the adaptation becomes necessary during the making process. Art making can symbolize life events, represent thoughts and feelings, explore different perspectives, spotlight strengths and survival responses. And I see the therapist's role as to support the client in emotion regulation, supporting ambivalence and overcoming avoidance. Thus aiding the client's body and active brain in reassessing and restoring altered memories and how and where to set those memories in their story. The collective creations produce a therapeutic portfolio that can act as a visual recovery dial, tracking progress and changes, disappointments and achievements. The art and a series of artworks often illustrate steps that might already have been incorporated in actual lives and thereby, thereby forgotten as they have become the norm. So accordingly, retrospective reviews, this lining of all the pieces of work that have been made chronologically and talking about them can strengthen whole, uh, hope of recovery, deepen understanding of amelioration, identify gaps and reestablish goals. Also creating an image or an item allows the client to both hold onto thoughts and feelings as well as ceremonially let him go. First by externalizing in the form of the visual expression, following the idea can be left behind physically by leaving it to be helped by the art therapist. And sometimes a ritual discarding is required. For example, burning, burying or shredding the item, which is an impactful creative expression. And in conclusion, art therapy has a bi-directional capacity, stimulating both cognitive top-down and somatic bottom-up processes thereby advancing sustainable coping skills. The physical engagement in the making process can furnish co-regulation, supportive of creative expression as a tool to focus thinking and investigating feelings, with the media serving as metaphors of life and aspect of self. And the tangible outcomes aid both reflective overview and distancing, promotive of insights that may be difficult to grasp cognitively 
or verbally. Additionally, a therapeutic portfolio can chronicle stages of change. And lastly, experiential investigation may stimulate, stimulate visualizing new concepts, perspectives, and harm reduction pathways. And slides adding the images that were not by myself. First dates of references, last dates of references. And then I hand it back to Sam. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Duke. A, a very um, interesting and thought provoking um, presentation. Um, there is, we do have one question in the chat so far, and um, I have a, a, a bit of a question and a, a reflection myself. Um, so I suppose um, I was looking at the theoretical and the clinical approaches, and I didn't expect art therapy to be as encompassing mm. uh, as what you presented. And I love the real um, simplicity of the, the pipe cleaners and how something so simple as coloured pipe cleaners could be used to kind of explore such a complicated, you know, presentation, but in a very trauma-informed, non-threatening manner for the person. So allowing the person to work through without digging directly at the kind of the cause of maybe what that what was happening. So I found it very, um, very interesting from that perspective. I didn't expect, you know, it to be as much. Um, and that's due to my lack of knowledge around um, art therapy. Uh, one of the questions that we did have was um, quite early where somebody said, could you please explain diversional? Ah, uh, so that was the image. Oh, it's probably hard for me to go back. Um, you know, things can be one thing, good and bad at the same time. Or you can feel happy and content, but also nervous at the same time. And you're not really sure why and how. It might be another person that you have a relationship with that you love and hate. So that's diversional. And how do you express that? You know, is it true? Is one of them more true than the other? Is there, you know, what, what aspect? So sometimes we can't really pinpoint while we have dualistic feelings towards a situation or a person or an environment or a life, you know, as small or as big as that gets. And if you put those, if you look at, if you contemplate that duality while you're making an item, an artwork, you quite often work out where it actually sits, where is the tipping point, what is acceptable, are the boundaries that have been overstepped. So I think in thought and in language, you either talk about this or you talk about that because of what I spoke before, I'm not speaking about now. Whereas if you put it in an image, you have them together. They're there, they're part of the same page, they're next to each other, they're overlapped, they're interlinking. And there you go, you've got a complete picture two different things and I think that's very different to maybe what we've seen as kind of art therapy before we've probably seen it as more of a you know a dive you know art is a diversional activity to keep people busy rather than art is therapeutic okay. and diversionary in that, okay. in that manner so art of diversional in that content is um, I'm really stressed, everything is too much, I'm so overwhelmed, I can't concentrate on anything. And then sitting down and actually doing something that is just giving peace, rest and tranquility and just losing yourself in a moment, being in a present moment and forgetting, not maybe forgetting, but just pausing or pushing to the side the other things. If that regulates your nervous, central nervous system, and you come out of it and you just have that little sigh of, ah, oh, that was good. And your shoulders lower a little bit. That also means that you can do so much more that day or maybe you sleep a little better or maybe you feel a little better. So that's a different diversion, yes. Yes. And I'm um, asking as well with the, um, so there's somebody else that said as well, the pipe cleaning exercise was very in insightful. Um, 
is is it kind of I noticed that you had a very um a sessional plan of things that you might look to work through through the sessions but do people sometimes get um stuck at one of the quite early stages and not able to progress as quickly as you would hope yeah it's I would say all the time um I think you come in with a certain hope or idea and you know the client works at the client's pace and that's really important and sometimes that can be uh regulating oneself and and just being in a moment before any deeper thoughts or the scary thoughts can be accessed or feelings can be delved into yeah it's some people might get stuck for five minutes and other people might get stuck for five weeks yeah I hope that answers the question. It, it does. It does. Um, if there is no other questions, we may wrap up for today. So, um, Duke, I've got a question. Oh, you have a question? Yes. Yes. So, did uh, people put into the chat um, about the info about the little survey? They certainly did. Um, what was interesting for me monitoring that was we had around seventeen people who responded and said visual and images. And we had 14 people who responded with sensations. But most of the responses were actually a combination of, of the two. So people were saying it was both images and sensations. And um, there was a couple of other ones that were brought up, which were colours and feelings. Oh, wow. Yes, actually- but um, there was very rarely a one-word answer. Most of them were you know, visual and touch, visual sensations, words and feelings, um, you know, touch and visual images and senses. So very kind of, you know, more than one response um, when thinking about an event that had happened. So was there anybody who had said verbal or words? No, there was feelings. Um and senses but there was no verbal no it was all sensations feelings images touch colors one person put words or two people put words sorry yeah and and for myself i experienced it first as feelings sensations you know can be colors or it can be uh, uh yeah joy or sadness and then i usually bring it to words and then i bring it to the outer world and i think I did this survey because I think that's where art therapy steps in. Like sometimes you can't find words. Sometimes it is that and you have to go through back into those feelings again and sensations before you can line it up or before it becomes verbalized. And sometimes it doesn't ever get to that point that you verbalize it, but it's still sitting with it, nurturing it, contemplating it may give some rest. Yeah, and it was a very small percentage who, as I said, two two responses that had words. Yeah, the majority were that kind of very visual or very sensation feeling kind of perspective, not the verbal. <laughs> okay, so are there any more questions from participants? Please ask anything. We've got ten more minutes. <laughs> There is a few thank yous coming through, Duke. Uh, people are saying that a couple of people who came late but said um, they're definitely going to watch the recording to deepen their understanding of the therapy and how it's used. Um, so, yes. yes, I think it's been very, um, I think it's created a lot of um, reflection for people. Um, and I think there's a lot of people will be coming back to look at this uh, webinar again to take in some more of those details and have a a better understanding of, of art therapy um, rather than that diversional, just keeping yourself busy and occupied. Yes, thank you. That's what's the intention because it's such a broad field and yeah. it, it can be so helpful. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for listening. I really And thank it. you very much, Duke, for, um, for presenting on this topic and, and raising awareness and um, and getting us to reflect on on what we've kind of what we've seen today in the presentation.